What is the true story behind The Conjuring? Stay tuned after this. What's up, Grayson Report? I hope you are doing well. I found this article that talks about the true story of The Conjuring, the Perrin family, and the Einfield hauntings. I feel like The Conjuring house is too hyped up. I really have a hard time believing that it is haunted. Um, and I do know one of the members of the Perrin family are adamant that the house is haunted and what she went through is true but uh let's dive into this article the true story of the conjuring the parent family and einfield hauntings the true story of the conjuring namely the parent family and the einfield ha hauntings is scarier than the movies themselves when the conjuring was released in 2013 it was met with critical acclaim Critics everywhere praised it for its all-too-realistic portrayal of the demonic haunting of an innocent family in Rhode Island. Most viewers assumed that the movie was nothing but the wild imaging of director James Wan. However, the true story of The Conjuring is actually rooted in a horrifying true experience of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Ed Warren was a World War II veteran and a former police officer who became a self-professed dem demonologist after studying the subject on his own. His wife, Lorraine, claimed to be a clairvoyant and medium who was capable of communicating with the demons that Ed discovered. In 1952, Ed and Lorraine found the New England Society of Psychic Research, the oldest ghost hunting group in New England. They quickly gained notoriety as respected paranormal investigators after their initial, initial investigation of the Amityville hauntings. Their two most famous cases, however, were heavily popularized by the Conjuring franchise, a series of movies that focused focuses on Ed and Lorraine ex experiences exercising demons from two possessed families. Not my favorite franchise. Um, I do not like the jump scares that the Conjuring franchise is known for, as well as the Nun films. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of this franchise. Though the movies seen over dramatized and impossible to believe, the Warrens maintain that all of the events depicted actually transpired. Though Ed died in 2006, Lorraine was a consultant on the film and claims that she didn't let the directors take any more dramatic license than was necessary. Nevertheless, the true story of The Conjuring remains most unbelievably chilling to this day. The True Story of the Conjuring, The Perrin Family The True Story of the Conjuring begins with the first film, which focuses on the Perrin family. In January of 1971, the Perrin family moved into a 14-room farmhouse in Harrisville, Rhode Island, where Carolyn, Roger, and their five daughters began to notice strange things happening almost immediately after they moved in. It started small. Carolyn would notice that the broom went missing or seemed to move from place to place on its own. She'd hear the sounds of something scraping against the kettle in the kitchen when no one was in there. She'd find small piles of dirt in the center of a newly cleaned kitchen floor. The girls began to notice spirits around the house, though the most part they were harmless. They were a few, however, that were angry. Carolyn allegedly researched the history of the home and discovered that it had been in the same family for eight generations and that many of them had died under mysterious or horrible circumstances. Several of the children have drowned in a nearby creek. One was murdered and a few of them hang themselves in the attic. The spirit that was depicted in the film, Bathsheba, was the worst of them all. Whoever the spirit was, she perceived herself to be mistress of the house and she resented the competition my mother posed for the position said andrea andrea perrin the oldest of the five girls it turns out there was actually a real person named Bathsheba sherman who lived on the perrin's property in the mid-1800s she was rumored to have been a satanist and there was evidence that she had been involved in the death of a neighbor's child though no trial ever took place she was buried in a nearby baptist cemetery in downhill harrisville downtown Oh my God, I said downhill. Downtown Harrisville. Sorry about that. The parents believed that it was Bathsheba's spirit that was tormenting them. According to Andrea, the family experienced other spirits as well that smelled like rotting flesh and would cause beds to rise off the floor. She claims her father would enter the basement and feel a cold, stinking presence behind him. 
They often stayed away from the dirt floored cellar, but the heating equipment would often fail mysteriously, causing Roger to venture down. Over the 10 years that the family lived in the house, the Warrens made multiple trips to investigate. At one point, Lorraine conducted a seance to attempt to contact the spirits that were possessing the family. During the seance, Carolyn per Perrin became possessed, speaking in tongues and rising from the ground in her chair. Andrea claims to have secretly witnessed the seance. I thought I was going to pass out, Andrea said. My mother began to speak in languages not of this world in a voice not of her own. Her chair levitated and she was thrown across the room. Though the movie version of events accumulates when Ed perform with Ed performing an exorcism rather than a seance, Lorraine insists that she and her husband would never attempt one as they must be performed by Catholic priests. After the seance, Roger kicked the Warrens out, worried about his wife's mental stability. According to Andrea, the family continued to live in the house due to financial instability until they were able to move in the 80s, at which point the spirits were silenced and the hauntings ceased. The Einfield Hauntings Six years after the Perrin family was terrorized by their demons, another family in Einfield, England, began to experience similar things. In August of 1977, the Hodgson family started seeing and hearing strange things. Janet, who was 11 at the time, recalled sitting up in bed to see her dresser slide across the room that she shared with her brother. We shouted, Mom, Mom, said Janet. We were sort of frightened, but also intrigued. Later, the family began to hear knocking coming from all sorts of places in the house. She remembered her mom thinking there were burglars or drifters hiding out in their home and calling the police to investigate. The officers arrived reported witnessing a chair rise up and move across the floor on its own. Reporters from the Daily Mirror, who were also called in to report on the on Einfield haunting, experienced from them for themselves too that's kind of big when you actually have an officer um witnessing something paranormal it kind of puts validity to it legos and marbles were reportedly flying around the room hot to the touch when picked up clothing folded on the tabletops would leap off of them and fly across the room the sounds of dogs barking would be heard in empty rooms lights would flicker coins would drop out of thin air and furniture would spin or tip over without being touched. Then, one day, the iron fireplace in an upstairs bedroom was ripped out of the wall. After that, paranormal investigators from all around the world showed up, claiming to be able to contact spirits and wanting to know more about the Einfield haunting. Most of them decided that the children had been faking their experiences, as one of them had admitted to doing so on one occasion, but the Warrens were different. They showed up and immediately believed that the, a demonic presence was present. However, their claims were overlooked as a noted skeptic at the time accused Ed Warren of exaggerating even making up incidents often transforming a haunting into one case of demonic possession. This is where the story offers from the this is where the story differs from the movie as there was no exorcism like practice from the Warrens. In 1979, two years after they began the hauntings, abruptly stopped, though the family maintains they did nothing to stop them. All right, guys. Um, you know, in a previous stream, how I um, had spoke about Ed and Lorraine Warren and how they could be fakes. Um, when I first heard about Ed and Lorraine Warren, I admit I thought they were geniuses. I was like, oh my god, I got starstruck, whatnot. Um, I'm like, yeah, those are the people that did the Amityville horror and whatnot. And the and the more that I researched and the more that um that I have read, it comes to find out that, and what I've heard from people, like such with the Amityville um, horror, um, saying that it's fake. Um, I feel like, as well with The Conjuring House, um, I feel like the person that owns it now is greedy, and they're using the history and the the fact that it's famously known because of the franchise to make money off of it. And I feel like that loses because of that, for me, at least it loses the validity that that house could be haunted though. Uh, one of the daughters of the parent family, um, adamantly, um, she comes out and speaks and she adamantly, um, says that what she has gone through is real, but I am still skeptical about it. And I feel like it's all, it's too hyped up. Um, 
the fact that when you do an investigation at the conjuring house, they want all your information. Um, they have to, I've also heard that, um, before you put a video up on your own YouTube channel that they have to approve it. And it makes me not believe what has happened there. Um, it loses its credibility as well as the Warrens have lost their credibility to me. Um, and if you saw that stream, you'll know my thoughts on that. And I feel we will never know because both Ed and Lorraine Warren are, you know, they have passed. So we will never know the real story. But I, I am very skeptical with them. Um, I'm very, I'm 50-50 when it comes to them. I used to be, uh, I used to be starstruck. I used to be a believer until I started researching and um, digging deep into you know, the paranormal and all these places. And now I'm becoming more, I'm 50, 50. I'm still always, I'm more of a skeptic now um, than I'm a believer, but I do believe in the paranormal and the spirit world, but I still have that sense of skepticism, but um, you'll never know if a place is haunted or an item is not haunted unless you investigate yourself. So that is one thing that, um, I want to live by and it's something that um, Jason from Ghost Hunters has said and it's the something that has always made sense. If you want to know if something's haunted, go there yourself. So I am not sure if this story is is true or not. You know, I want to believe but because of the hype, um, because of the greed of the current owners that own the Conjuring House, I feel like it's hyped up. And I'm very skeptical with it. So, guys, what is your, um, do you believe the story? Um, even with the Einfield, the Einfield um, haunting is not talked about as often, I feel like, as The Conjuring. But even with that, I'm a little skeptical with it. I'm not too familiar with it. So, I do need to do a little more research on it. But um, what are your thoughts on The Conjuring um, the hauntings of the Perrin family on the Warrens and the Einfield haunting. Please comment below. And as always, I do go live every Monday, Thursdays and Saturdays at 7 p.m. to 6 standard time. Be there or be squared and stay spooky, guys, and sweet nightmares. And I'll see you on the next one.